so yeah, um, I just did my first concealed carry outside in public. Um, doesn't feel bad. I'm carrying it at four o'clock. No problem, feels comfortable. Um, I can't do that, uh, what they call that, uh, what's it when you call it, uh, carry it in the front. Um, damn it, it's, it's getting past me right now because I forget. Um, it's been a while. Um, but yeah, I can't carry that right in the front near your jock strap. I can't do that carry right there. I have to carry it on the side. You know, as you can see, I got it, you know? So, not a, it's not a bad thing to tell you the truth. You know, it's kind of hard going back, going back in the holster when you're sitting down like this. So you gotta be careful. So I got it back in. All getting used to, you know? It's all getting used to. Fully loaded with some hollows in there. So I'm ready to go. It's the anxiety. I gotta get off of that anxiety of carrying in public because, you know, I grew up in I grew up in a bad neighborhood here in Boston, Roxbury, if you ever heard of it. But um, you know, you carry a gun, you know, you gotta growing up in my times, you carry a gun, you gotta have this kind of like, you know, paranoia with you. You're watching out behind your back. You, you know what I mean? You're just looking out for anything that's, you know, can cause a stir. And with doing that, you know, in my day, if you was carrying a gun, um, which I never did, because I really never had no reason to. I was a guy who was into sports and stuff like that, you know, girls. But um, so, you know, the people I hung up with, we didn't have, you know, don't say that I ain't have one or two friends who probably would have carried a gun, but... You know, we never had problems. I was never involved with gangs or anything. But I live in a gang-infested neighborhood. I lived in the in the hood, as they say, you know? And, um, you know, at any given time, you can be searched by a cop. You know, the way things is recorded now, you know, back in my days, kids got shot by cops, killed by cops, but it wasn't something that was, you know, actually put out there because... You know, back in my day, in the eight, not 80s and 90s, they didn't have no social media. So, with that being said, you know, you know, with everything going on, black men getting killed by cops, you know, with the whole gun situation, like, it's a big, big thing. It is, I mean, it's a big thing if you're a criminal, but, you know, if you're a lawful citizen like myself, I think you should have the right to. So, I'm exercising that right. You know, years later, you know, I found I finally woke up. Um, I got friends of mine who's exercising their rights. They finally woke up. Um, so I'm carrying now. Today was my first day. Uh, I got to mark it down. June 11th, 2018, my first day officially carrying concealed carry in public. Um, I went to the gas station. I went to the store. It's, it's, you know, it's a compact handgun, so it don't give too much girth to the, you know, to your waistline. So, um, you know, nobody was watching or looking, you know, or anything odd like that. And I wasn't looking, you know, for people to be looking. I'm not tugging on my waist and adjusting my belt. You know, I learned that a lot from these guys on YouTube. You know, um, you know all that tucking and adjusting. That's bringing attention to yourself, you know, for the cats on the street, you know, attention to yourself for the, you know, the Babylon them, police boy them, you know, I don't need that attention. I ride smooth anyway, dolo, you know, I don't ride with nobody, dolo from state to state, as I say all the time. So I'm not hot. I don't drink and drive, you know, smoke and drive, anything like that. 
So it's a good experience. I feel comfortable. I don't feel bad. Um, it's a first test, though. We'll see what happens. Um, I'll continue to do it. You know, one thing I learned is, see that right there? That's my wallet. And in front of my, that's my concealed carry. And in front of that is my license. So if I was to ever get pulled over and it's sitting right here on my, on my side of my hand, you know, my hand rest on the door. I get pulled over, the first thing I'm doing is handing them both IDs. You know, um, in Massachusetts, you know, they might ask for registration, but if they pull you over, they already know if you got registration or not. You know what I mean? That's not a problem. So, you know, but what I think they should do nationally, and some two-way guys might be opposed to it, but I think so. You know, if you have a car registered to your name and you're a registered license, you know, concealed carry, LTC, CCW, whatever you guys call it in your state, I feel as though to ease up the tension when a person gets pulled over by a cop, black, white, Hispanic, Chinese, whatever, I feel as though if they know so they can have they have so much information on you on anything else you do a cop when he pulls over a car that's registered a person now it, you know the car might not be registered to me but you know if I'm driving in my car per se and it's registered to me and you run it and you see okay yeah he's speeding or whatever and you're gonna give me a ticket you know so you're gonna pull me over for speeding I think once he run that plate in my name and it comes up, it should say that person is a, a license registered to carry, you know, licensed to carry a firearm, you know, and that way they're informed before they walk up to your car with any kind of misconceptions, you know, based on ethnicity or class or anything like that. So I think that's something they should look into. You know, maybe there's a little bit of gray area in there with some people, you know, two-way people or people who's built on information and the whole information act. They might not want that. They might not think, you know, that a cop should know that off the bat when they run your plate. But I think it might be a, 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 a you know, a necessary tool or research to kind of, um, you know, slow down the element of surprise when a cop pulls over somebody who's licensed to carry and the person says oh yeah I got my gun and now the cops drawing guns and you know SWAT team and you know literally in, in, in jeopardy of the you know the person that they pulling over to lose their life you know so that's something we need to think about maybe I'm wrong if you guys think different comment on it but I think that you know maybe that should be attached to your registration or even attached to your license you know you hand a cop your license they say oh wow he's a licensed carry you know he's licensed to carry you know now if i get pulled over something criminal and like you know whatever you know if it could be you know a doobie or dui like i don't mess around with shit like that but if someone wants to get pulled over for a dui you know and the cop pulled them over knowing that he's gonna give them you know this person might be drunk um he could know how he's dealing with that with that person who's drunk or swerving on the highway, you know, by running that place. Say, okay, he's drunk, he's licensed to carry. We got to deal with this in the correct way. You know what I mean? So something to think about. But my concealed first day, concealed carry, great, no problem. So stay tuned for my next video. I'll be reviewing my Kinnick TP9 Elite at the range. Um, it's kind of a little bit. It's a full-size handgun, so it's not something I'm gonna be using for concealed carry. So, um, and then I'll give, I'll have some more videos on some concealed carry and how that go. All right, take care.